<laughs> well, I'm ready. All right. Thank you, Cloud9, for showing up. This is God. I'm here to be with you today. Um, appreciate you taking the time after your big win. Congratulations. And we have a ton of questions for you. So we're going to get started right away with Travis Gafford. Uh, congratulations to all you guys on the big win. It was a really fun match to watch. Uh, I have to ask Perks. The obvious question, which is, are you disappointed you can't face G2 at MSI, and what do you think of their loss? Uh, well, I am quite sad that they lost, because it will be fun to have a grudge match against them, right? Or like a match against my old teammates. And part of me is a little bit uh, satisfied that I won and they lost, you know, because they are my friends. But then the part of me is also a little bit sad that they lost as well, after I saw their faces they lost. So... I think it's just, I know that they will come back in summer and we'll meet them in Rolts or, well, we will see each other in Rolts, so that's all that matters. Okay, let's go to Andrew. Uh, hey guys, congratulations on the win. I've actually got a very similar question for Fudge. Um, I mean, you've kept your winning streak across all competitions now in every split, and now you're the first OC player to represent the LCS at an international event. Like, what kind of prestige does that come from you from the, you know, the 15-year-old boy that was dominating OC, Soli Q, and in-houses just a few years ago? Um, it feels really good, obviously, to be, like, I guess, considered one of the better OC players. So, um, I mean, last time I went to an international tournament, I was with OC in an OC team, and I got pretty much stomped by like the other regions. So going into MSI, I don't want to get stomped by the other regions. And I think that's like the main focus for me. Obviously there's like a lot of like hopes on me from like OC, uh, like the OC community. So I just want to play well. Okay, Manny, you're next. Hi, uh, my question's to Sven. Uh, you know, we saw you absolutely buzzing and sprinting towards that trophy. How is the feeling for you winning this year in comparison to last year? You know, what what was the emotions after you won? Um, I mean, it was a high moment because last year we didn't go, we didn't celebrate that much because we were like offline. Well, we were like at home, right? So we were online, sorry. Um, it wasn't that hype because we knew we were going to win and the series was kind of close. So it was just more of a hype moment, I guess. So it was fun to win, and I was really excited. And uh, hello, Angie. So yeah, that's it. Uh, let's go to Matt from Stack next. Hey, how's it going, y'all? Uh, congrats on the win and the spring split going to uh, MSI. And uh, my question's for Fudge. So Fudge, we talked a little bit a while ago and also reaching all the way back to January, right? You were the victim of like tower dive after tower dive. Everybody was flaming you on Reddit. And now you're here and you're orchestrating first bloods on arguably the best top laner in the LCS and you're gearing up to face international competition. What's that growth been like for you? How does it feel to feel yourself growing as a player and what's next on your list of goals? Yeah, so after playing in the lock-in tournament, uh, obviously a big weakness of like mine was that I uh, didn't really communicate well with my teammates to like help me around top lane. And I think that's obviously during the entire split, we worked really well uh, to like improve on like me and Blabber specifically, also me and uh, Luca and I guess sometimes Vulcan <laughs> to uh, gank top a lot. And I think that Blabber has also become really aware about top waves and when to gank and uh, the timings that the top laner has, uh, well, the top laner that the top, uh, and the timings that the enemy top laner has to be vulnerable. And I think that, um, obviously it showed really well in the series. I think that Alfari by the end of the series got really scared of every single time I'd ever pull a wave because he was scared that Blabber would just become, come from behind him and kill him. So I think the progress has been really good. And I think that um, we'll obviously keep working to punish top even more going into international tournament. Woo. Nice. Let's go to Andrew from oh GG God. Recut. Ooh. Oh. And some hardware. Um, this yes. question is more for the, the coaching staff. So on Friday, TL announced that Armea was going to sub in for Santorin. And then they subsequently played with, with him for with him on for TSM and against you guys, of course. And then how much prep, if any, did you guys 
put into a TL that was playing with Armeo instead of Centaurin? And was there anything specific that you targeted that you knew about Armeo? Um, so for that one, from uh, uh, at least in my opinion, right now, jungle, there's like same champion is played. Um, to be honest, like anyone, any player is playing uh, same champ over and over. So we didn't really have to like prep too much different. I think the only thing worry about about was that uh, Santorin uh, contest like vision way better uh, with Core JJ, but uh, going in with Arma, I think that part was like more relieved. So uh, I think we kind of expect it to be easier uh, facing Team Liquid uh, without Santorin for sure. Okay, let's go to Pedro. Go <laughs> <laughs> Hello, uh, congratulations Lenai, for the victory. And this question is for Perks. Last year you mentioned that you're worried about your level uh, like a player and still make it into the international stage. Um, with now this win with another team in another region, what are you gonna be your next goals for your career, especially with your return to the MSI? Mm, the goal is to win MSI. Um, and the win every every single game and tournament we play. Um, even though Damon looks quite strong right now, uh, I believe that the um, the teams that are going to be playing there are going to give us a lot of good practice, and we're going to get maybe some reality checks regarding some stuff, and then we can improve from there. I think we are showing in every best of series we are quite good at adapting, and I think we are improving a lot throughout the split. So I'm just very hopeful in us like improving in the bootcamp at MSI, and hopefully showing really good performances there. OK, next up is Nick Ray. Hey, this is a question for Sven. So this finals probably had all the makings of like a really hype finals. Um, the opening ceremony had a lot of production value. It was a five game series. Um, you guys now get to go to MSI where you didn't last year. Um, did it feel lacking at all for you, someone who's been in plenty of finals on huge stages without the audience there? Like you just kind of look up after celebrating and you see this empty field. I mean, I didn't mind the empty field so much because it is what it is, right? But I think that the venue, the whole playing outside, having the sun in your eyes, um, the breeze once in a while, <laughs> then, <laughs> then game four and five was really, really cold. And... <laughs> And the stage was shaking whenever someone was moving. It was, I think it was a fun experiment, but if we had lost, I would be really tilted because I think the environment wasn't fit for competitive integrity or whatever. I think there was a lot of, like, I don't like when I can't see the timers of the Dragon of the Baron in first two games because I can't see anything because there's a glare or I don't like that everyone has to use two hand warmers on cooldown because their hands are cold <laughs> in game four and five. It just feels like this whole thing was a bit of a failed experiment, to be honest, but I think it was a good decision to not have any fans in the menu. So, yeah. All right, next up is Azento. Hey guys, uh, Azento from Esports Heaven. Uh, and so I want to address this to both uh, Perks and Blabber. I feel like there's a certain mentality that happens when you're in a game five. Some people lie down and play safe. Some players just play for the late game. But the two players that come to mind, for me at least, uh, when it just comes to just not giving a damn about the game number, and it's Blabber and Perks, uh, because your styles seem to index towards being more aggressive, <laughs> you know, with, with as the game numbers increase. So what are both of your philosophies on game point mental state and the optimal way to view how you can gain an advantage uh, within the game state. Thank you for having my friend. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'll go first, I guess. Um, I will never play safe uh, with my play style. Uh, <laughs> <You know that. laughs> um, I don't care like what game it is. I think there are a lot of players who play really aggressive in scrims and then they go on stage and they're really scared to engage or they're really scared to you know, take what should be theirs. And uh, I'm not really thinking about what game it is. And if I see an angle to punish the opponents, I'm going to punish them. And sometimes it turns out bad, but you know, you got to do uh, what you think is right. Um, well, usually I think 
what you said is actually kind of correct. Like the the when you get losing and the series goes like longer, I think some players do get like more scared. And I personally saw Team Liquid's faces after game four, and I knew we were going to win. I didn't want to mention it to like give my teammates like fake data or something, but they looked really um, they looked really destroyed uh, after losing that game. And I just thought that us playing aggressive. I mean, doesn't matter what the game, what game it is, but it's like I knew that this game was going to be win even before the game started, basically. So I think it's just like a lot about the mental strength, I guess. Okay, next up, Jay Silver. Congratulations on your victory once again. Uh, so my question is for Blabber. Uh, you just tweeted out not too long ago that this will be your first international tournament as a starter. After your win today, how do you guys, or how do you feel about your chances internationally? And is there anyone that you're looking to face off against? Um, yeah, I'm excited to play internationally uh, for the first time as a starter. I think uh, I never really got to fully experience it um, before, right? And last year we didn't make any international tournaments as a team. So I really want to be able to scrim against like the best junglers in the world and actually see uh, how I compare to them uh, as a, like with us as a team, uh, instead of being a sub and having to play a specific strat as the only reason I'm going in. Um, special <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so I'm just excited for that. Uh, and I mean, I mean, I know like Canyon's in our group, so I'm excited to play against uh, him at MSI and also uh, whatever LPL representative goes, uh, because I think, I mean, I like the LPL play style, so I'm excited to play against them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get a Nick from Enven. Hey guys, congrats on your win. Uh, my question is for uh, either Rainover or Mithy, whoever feels more suited to answer. Uh, throughout the series, Cloud9 was praised for their ability to get first blood on Alfari in the top lane, but game five was a little extra special in that you guys pulled off this nifty lane swap with. Uh, you know, utilizing the Scion Zombie passive to, to make sure everything was shored up on all sides. I'd like to know, uh, without spilling too much of the secret sauce, uh, what exactly went into making this play work and, and, and the preparation behind it, but also why you chose to reveal it and use it here in Game 5 of the Mid-Season Showdown Finals. Um, well, uh, so, the, so I, basically we, we thought Scion was very strong in the meta. <laughs> And it, it had been showing up a lot, uh, also in the LEC, just like every game. So uh, eventually, I sort of thought of the the lane swap because it's something that uh, has been done in the past. Um, something that even my old coaches annoyed me with, and I had I had to like do some drills uh, like four. So yeah, I mean, I just uh, just sort of got the idea, and I think uh, we used the rogues game from like last year, I think. I think it was last year. It was against me. Yeah, against Luca. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was that was also convincing because uh, it was a pretty rough uh, game for G two. So yeah, I think we we did a few tries. We used our academy team to help us out, and yeah, we were convinced that it was good. So we just decided to show it when it really mattered, basically. Okay, and we are down to the last question, so we will give it to Travis Gafford. At the end of the, the match, it looked like on the broadcast, you kind of took off from the rest of your team and just ran down alone to the trophy. Um, and so I'm I, just kind of curious why you decided to abandon your team uh, after the, the big Oh, they were, just, <laughs> <laughs> they were just too slow. Nothing I can do. <laughs> also, the, the cameraman was in my way. I, was, I don't know. He was like trolling. I think he was measuring what was happening there. But I, don't know, I was just very excited. I think this whole series was all adrenaline. Uh, winning game four and then five was like kind of a stump in a way, but it was like so hype. And it's been a lot, long time since we played on stage. Um, so I don't know. I feel like I finally got out of the cage and I had too much energy to hold it back, I guess. Thanks. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Cloud9. Congratulations and Bingo. best of luck yeah. in <laughs> MSI. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the best in representing NA. Uh, let's bring home a trophy and have a good night and celebrate responsibly, of course.
Thank you. Thank Take you. it easy, guys. Bye, -bye. Bye. These days, everybody's talking about Wild Rift this, Wild Rift that. And you know what's actually wild? The amazing performance you can get with Alienware computers with NVIDIA graphics cards in them. Uh, you can go check them out over at Alienware.com slash Travis, and you can use Travis 10 off to save 10%. Also wild that you can do that. Uh, they've got some fantastic stuff, including the Alienware M15 R4. We love Alienware. Thank you so much for sponsoring my content, and we'll catch you next time.